Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, this is MorphWiz, and this is going to be a really, really quick explanation of it. I think one of the most important things to understand about MorphWiz is some of the magic that's really under the hood that lets you make music easily. Um, for me, it's not all about just allowing you to make music easily. It's more about giving you something that's really expressive, that lets you control your music in a way that was uh, just not possible before. So what I mean ab about that is this. Um, right now I've got a sound for Pull Me Under, one of the Dream Theater songs up. So what happens with MorphWiz is that uh, one of the basic modes enables you to tap anywhere on the screen, right, even looking away. And you'll have to trust that I'm looking away. And when your finger first lands on a note, it's going to be one of the exact diatonic pitches. And it doesn't matter even if you're like in between the line. Like there, I tapped in between G and A, but I was closer to G, so it played a G. So you don't have to... But what's cool is I can still slide. Okay, the second half of this explanation is that MorphWiz enables you to not only have an exact pitch when you first tap, but when you slide, like from G to A, and then you stop your finger, it's going to be exactly in tune. It can be exactly in tune. You can set how long it takes for MorphWiz to tune your pitch once you stop your slide. So watch, I'll go a little bit beyond the A, a little bit to the right of it, but watch what happens sonically. Aha, it tuned it anyway. And as soon as I start to move, it'll slide. So you have the instant uh, correction of pitch when you first land, and you also have correction of pitch when your finger stops after a slide. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the magic of MorphWiz. Now, if you want to control the speed of that uh, auto kind of rounding, you go to the pitch page down here, and one of the sliders is called pitch rounding rate. This is where I usually leave it. Uh, if I move it all the way to the top here, that's the fastest, right? And that'll round really fast, but the slides are not quite as smooth, so I keep it around here at like 0.74 or so. I find that that's really cool. And notice you can be editing while you're still, you know, using the playing surface. Uh, let's go back to the playing surface as well. So you can have the notes on the screen, which is cool to show you what's going on. You can also in the display, uh, you can choose which the display is down here. Um, you just go right here to display. And you can choose to have intervals. So now it'll tell you, like, you know, whether the note is the perfect fifth, or the fourth, or the seventh. Or, and everything is color-coded. The root, for instance, is always red, which is pretty cool. And you can pick your key here. You've got a complete uh, scale picker. And you can just scroll through. And it's a good way to learn about scales as well. There's a bunch of them in here. And you can modify the scale by, let's say, now we're looking at chromatic, but we could turn the uh, minor second uh, off or on or whatever you want to do and create your own custom scale. So you can have some fun with that. Uh, over here on the wave page, you can pick the waveforms that MorphWiz is playing. You can have a starting wave. You can have an ending wave. Uh, and then you can pick how you want to get from the starting wave to the ending wave. Uh, right now I've got it set up for the vertical grid. So we'll start here at a square wave and we'll end at a sawtooth wave. So when you play here, you can see it on the screen as well. It's going to morph visually. Let's open up, exit out, and look back at the playing surface. You can also go to the wave page, go back, hit open up the menu. Now you're in the edit page again. You can say, no, I don't want it on the vertical grid. I want to put it on the X tilt. So when you move your phone, your phone, when you move your iPad like this, it will also change your wave shape. So you can pick a start value or start wave and an end wave. The sliders let you pick anywhere in between. So if you didn't want to go directly to, let's say, a 
um, sawtooth wave, you could bring it back a little bit towards the start wave. You can even see the little nice picture there. Um, your synthesizer is very cool in MorphWiz as well. Um, you've got two different kinds of synthesis. One is FM, uh, one is wave sync, and you pick them both on this page. And they're pretty dialed in for you. There's not a whole lot of parameters. If you're on FM, uh, this modular uh, frequency ratio is basically determining kind of like the amount of FM you want and the depth is determining how much of that is present on the vertical uh, motion on the grid or on the tilt. So uh, if I keep this all the way up, then as I move like this, I'm going to get a bunch of uh, FM. If I have it in wave sync, then I get to choose how many octaves do I want the wave sync effect. It says sweep range of octaves. I can say three, and then I can just, we can l listen to it. And you can play with that as well. That's pretty fun. So uh, that's just a little bit about the synthesis. Um, pitch range, you can see as many octaves as you want on the screen as well. If you wanted to have six octaves on the screen, uh, please do. And you'll notice there's a ton of lines in the screen right now. I still have that wave sync setting, so that's why we're getting that big... three octave slide. Um, all right, I don't think I mentioned these buttons. On the main play screen, this is your magic slider. This can be either controlling the FM amount that's assigned to the vertical grid, so it's kind of like the same as that little slider we saw uh, in the synth page, so you can play with that. Um, this one is a cool button. This allows your sound to go through the delay buffer or not, so you could have absolutely dry, or press it and then get your echoes. If you're in the mood to uh, do an infinite echo, you press that button right there, and that will offer you infinite echoes. If you press it again, they will stop. Um, the other thing that's available on the uh, main playing surface, if you go to this controls page, right, that's where you set whether, you, whether or not you want certain things on, on the play a page. So you want your keyboard on or off, your octave buttons. You can determine what you want to be present in your performance page. Your delay buttons, they're set to on. Uh, your pitch buttons, let's set those on and see what, what comes up. So once you set those to on, what will happen is when you close out using this X, you'll see them down here. This is round new notes. This is lock pitch. If lock pitch is on, notice that Your, your pitches actually snap to the grid. Lock pitch is off. You're sliding around. So those are some very, very handy buttons. Uh, I might not have said that you can actually change the patch down here. Super easy. Uh, we go to Bebot JR. Oh, what a name for a patch. That's awesome. Uh, you can change whether or not like there's rings or particles under your finger. Go back up to menu. Go to display. The display is cool because that's where you shift your backgrounds around. These are all your backgrounds. So you can have some fun with that. Uh, you could pick this, for example. You could say, I don't want particles. Sorry, I want to have rings. The rings look like this. What's really cool about the rings is that they show you whether or not you're in tune or when, when MorphWiz tunes you. So like, if it's colored, it means it's not quite diatonic yet. So as you slide, it'll be colored until you stop your finger and then it turns white when you're in tune. So let's look at the pitch rounding. Let's turn that up a little bit so it does round. Do that again. There, now it's white, we're in tune, slide, it's white, turns white, so that'll show you when the note goes to, a, you know, the proper diatonic intonation. Um, so that's a little bit about the program, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can show you quickly. This is kind of cool, in the volume page you get to choose how much you want the vertical grid to affect your volume. If it's all the way up, it doesn't matter where you are in the vertical grid, it'll be the same volume. If you have the vertical grid volume slider down, then it'll be very soft at the bottom and louder 
at the top.